Welcome back to Introduction to Programming using C++. What I'm going to go over today are the standard scalar data types, two types, integer types, and floating point types. Uh, I'm going to show you the size of each, go over the sizes of each, and why you would use one over the other. What I'm showing you now, right now, is what the de development environment for C++ on DevShed size is could be different if you're using Visual Studio for now and just for for errors for error free sake I'm gonna show you these but it could be different depending on the environment that you're using so for the integer types you're not gonna have decimal points you're just gonna have whole numbers and there's a couple of integer types that you can use one is called the int you declare a variable of int type and that's gonna occupy four bytes you're going to have a range of negative 2 million, I'm sorry, negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion and some change. And if you go beyond this range, it's going to give you a runtime error. Make sure that you do stay within the bounds of this range. Remember that when you declare variables, it's not infinite. You have a finite amount of space. So whatever you can fit in four bytes uh, within this range is what you can fit. Then you have unsigned int, and you're going to ask, well, what's the difference? The difference is with an unsigned int, you can declare, I mean, you can use unsigned numbers. So you're going to be using unsigned numbers, whereas with integer, you could use signed numbers. With unsigned int, you're telling the compiler you're only going to use unsigned positive numbers. And this also has a size of four bytes. And then the other types of integers variables that you can declare as would be long same concept you're gonna have four bytes and this is your range over here and you have a char data type which is I can explain later on oh, this looks like an uh, character meaning for strings but it's still deep down inside an integer data type and I can ex I'm gonna explain later in the later slides as to why it is an integer data type but a char you need to understand right now is that it occupies one byte and for you to use it you have to use single quotes and the value of the character constant is going to correspond to the ASCII code just a little bit of an overview you know every key on your keyboard translates into an integer number so for example the letter A lowercase a may translate to the integer value of 64 which is a 64 is the ASCII code for the letter A and that's why this is an integer data type I'll go into more detail as the course goes on and as we declare it as I give you the, the phys uh, actual example the practical example on the compiler and then the last data type integer data type is a bool so you're gonna have 0 for false and 1 for true and C++ will evaluate any expressions that are true to 1 and anything else that's false would evaluate to 0 using the bool data type. Aside from the integer types, you also have the floating types which are used for real numbers, meaning the numbers that have decimal points with them. They're going to have uh, an exponent or a decimal point or it could have both and you're gonna have a floating point notation such as the following here uh, over here our uh, exponential notation uh, and there's two types of data types for floating point there's a float which also has a limitation of, of size you're gonna have four bytes and you're gonna have a range of 3.4 po uh, negative 3.4 to the to the 38th power uh, all the way to 3.4 to the positive uh, 38 power uh, and then you're gonna have a precision of six significant digits after the decimal point for a floating point so a float will give you less precision than a double so if you want the ultimate precision then you would use a double data type if you don't if you only are using money then you would use a float for the double data type uh, this is a larger data type and it occupies eight bytes and you're gonna have a larger range instead of 38 to the 38th power you're gonna go all the way to the 308th power both negative and positive and you're gonna have a 
15 significant digits for the actual value of this data, anything that's declared in this data type. What are the reasons that you're going to use one or the other? Well, if you're going to use integer data types, then you really would only be doing operations on whole number results. And you would only want whole number results. Again, because you have a smaller range and size for integer data types, then it's going to take the computer less time to do any operations on them. If you're using floating types, it's going to take the computer a longer time to compute them. Specifically, if you're going to use any type of decimal calculations, calculations that involve decimal or floating point numbers, and you're going to need a larger range, then of course you're going to have to use the floating data types. But don't do it if you don't have to, because it's gonna it's gonna actually be more efficient if you use integer when you're supposed to and use floating when you're supposed to. You don't want to be declaring everything as double uh, and be taking up eight bytes every time you declare a variable. And remember, every time you declare a variable, you're gonna take up space in memory. If I made all my variables of double data type, then I'd be I'd be taking up eight bytes. And believe me, programs do grow in size, and if you start declaring everything in double, you're going to have a monumental, very, very slow program. Okay, so let me show you just a couple of examples on how to declare these data types. So if I go into my C++ IDE, uh, and I want to declare a variable, so I would say int my variable. And what I usually do is I say I because it's an integer and then if I was declaring a doubles and I would say double D my double is equal is just that so what can I declare what, what can I store in I my variable I can say I my variable is equal to 20 and then D my double is equal to 23.3 and right now this isn't really going to do much to the for us to, to see so if I compile and run it's going to ask me to save this standard data types uh, nothing's going to happen here but if I use my cout object with my insertion operator my variable and I write out a inline then there you go that's going to be my variable and the value of that variable is 20 I've assigned it the value 20 over here and I'm printing it out to output so what I'm, I'm showing you is the first section of your program which is a declaration section this would be the output section and somewhere along the middle would be your processing section but remember, any time that you start a program, start with your declaration section and you declare your variables in here. And you can use your standard data types to declare your variable, your variables. The other thing I wanted to go over is a char. So if I declare a char, my character. And now I'm going to assign a value to it, my character. And I'm going to print it out to output. If I do that, so it's going to print out A. Now, the strange thing is that you're going to find is if I go back to, I'm going to open up Internet Explorer here. Okay, so let me go to Google. And I look up the ASCII chart. And let's say I want the ASCII value for the letter A, but these aren't the right ones. Let me just go over here. Okay, so we, we got a couple of characters. So this is the way that you read an ASCII chart. So the character here, and then you have the decimal value over here. If I go into the letter A, and I want to print that out. Obviously, I can do it two. Now I can, I'm going to show you how to do it two ways. You can put it in quotes, or you can actually assign the letter 65 to the value. Because again, this is an integer data type. Remember that. 
So if I do 64, this is not going to print 64. It's going to print the letter capital A. So if I print that, see that? I'm sorry. So that's actually going to print an at sign. So if I go back to my, uh, it's not 64, it's 65. So you see that? I put in 64, the character was the at sign. If I do 65, it should be capital A. So let me go back and print that out. If I do 65, uh, and then I print out, and that's the character A now. You see how I can assign an integer value to my character variable, and it's actually going to print out the actual ASCII character. And this is the way that the character variable, the character data type works, is you can do it both ways. So you got to be careful when you do print out values with a character uh, variable. But mo most of the time, you're safe by just doing the following. And remember that this takes up one byte. So if I do that, it's going to give me the same value. Remember that this takes up one byte. So you're going to have a range, if you go back to your ASCII chart, from 0 to 127. Now, in different keyboards, you're going to have larger ranges because different keyboards, such as the Chinese characters and the Russian characters, are going to have different types of byte lengths for each ASCII key. So you have to also remember that when you're using this and you're programming in another language. And it's also beneficial for you to be aware because in databases this comes very very handy when you're trying to declare column size but I, I won't go into that that's another that's another course but again the character data type yes it's used it's it takes up one byte and you can use it by to print one letter from the alphabet or any type of character that's on your keyboard so anything that you want to print out you can uh, exclamation point pound sign but you can also print it out by using its decimal value and if you print out if you assign assign a character variable its decimal value then it's going to print out to output the actual character representation in the ASCII chart and that's it for today uh, I will talk to you soon in the next lesson uh, I hope you've learned a lot and if you have any questions as always I can answer them in the Q&A. Thank you.